They're in the open ocean. Graceful dolphins glide beneath the surface in pursuit of fish, their primary food. These fish, in turn, feed on minute, prolific creatures called zooplankton. These days, zooplankton share the surface waters with increasing numbers of minute plastic particles, posing a problem since fish and birds are now consuming plastic in addition to plankton. Since petroleum-based plastics are non-biodegradable, any plastic entering the ocean remains there continually breaking into ever smaller pieces until it becomes ingested or is deposited on some distant shore. Captain Charles Moore of the Algolita Marine Research Foundation is conducting experiments to better understand the threat posed by this global environmental catastrophe. As captain of the oceanographic research vessel Algita, I've traveled to many remote areas of the Pacific Ocean. And in my travels, I've been alarmed at the increase in the amount of trash, plastic debris on all the beaches that I visit. My sentiment was that the ocean is filling up with trash. To try to get a handle on the quantity of trash in the ocean, uh, we devised a series of experiments using uh, mantatrol and our technique of pairing the mass of zooplankton to the mass of plastic fragments. We trawled over 100 kilometers at random lengths and then came back to the lab and analyzed our samples. We compared the weight of the plastic pieces that we accumulated in these trawls to the weight of the zooplankton that we accumulated. And most people find it highly distressing to learn that for every six pounds of plastic that we got, there was only one pound of plankton. In other words, there's six times more plastic by weight in this area than there is naturally occurring plankton. However, the Central Pacific being a gyre, does accumulate. The high concentrations we found are likely to be at their greatest in the center of the Central Pacific Gyre. The alarming thing that we found was that practically every place that we sampled had these plastic fragments in it. No place is free of this plastic fragment pollution. So far, no one has looked at the effect on hormone disruption of these plastic particles in fish and birds. The lace and albatross and the black-footed albatross ingest post-consumer plastic, and the lace and albatross ingest gliders and light sticks and large plastic fragments. One of the problems you have as far as when uh, the adult brings the plastic and regurgitates it into the chick, uh, if the chick is not receiving enough nutrients, enough uh, food, uh, and this plastic is basically filling the void in the stomach, essentially it could die. What you see in here is basically it's a, a bottle cap, to some might have been a shampoo bottle or something of that nature, another bottle cap. This looks like an electric uh, wire plug. Today aboard the oceanographic research vessel Algita, we're sampling after one of the largest storm events in the last two years. The amount of rain has created a huge plume out from the mouth of the San Gabriel River, and we're attempting to see the effects of this plume of runoff and the amount of debris that's contained within it. Pretty much plastic in this one, too. And a lot of plastic fragments. Small plastic fragments. These are the things that compete with the plankton as a food source. Actually, in our study, we counted over 27,000 pieces of plastic, and out of that 27,000, only 83 were tan. Now, we know from the large pieces of debris that we collected that there's plenty of tan objects that are breaking down to form plastic fragments, but we believe that the tan pieces are being selectively removed by birds and other uh, plankton feeders because they resemble the krill.
So color is important as a food mimic, also shape. The nurdles themselves have an oval shape that resembles fish eggs and are preferentially eaten by many species of birds. Over 70 species of birds have been found to ingest these pre-consumer plastics. Studies have been done on birds, have found higher PCB content in their tissues when they've ingested plastic. So we know this plastic is a way to transport pollution. Some Japanese scientists have just released a study indicating that plastic pellets, the manufactured way that uh, plastics are shipped to end-use manufacturers, uh, these plastic pellets are accumulators of uh, hydrophobic uh, pollutants, things like DDE, PCB. These can be up to a million times more concentrated on the surface of these plastic pellets than they are in the ambient seawater based on this latest research. As Captain Moore says, the ocean is like a soup, and the stock is getting thicker. But instead of noodles, the sea is getting thick with nurdles and synthetic particles.